Welcome to Blonde Cards and Crafts. Let's make something together. Hello crafters. Today we are going to be using the Papercraft Society Box 38 products to make our card. Our card is going to be an envelope gatefold style card. So I just wanted to show you this is Sasha Reed. She has inspired the products that came inside um, box 36. So let's go ahead now and get on with making our card. So all the measurements have been along here for you. You can pause the video and take down the measurements if you like, but I'm going to go through them all with you here now. First thing I'm going to use is this. It's a five by seven card base and to make your own, this one is shop bought and it is an actual five by um, seven card base which is always good um, you'll need a piece of 10 by 7 and then score it at 5 and that'll give you a 5 by 7 card base this is the size that I generally like to work in that and a 6 by 6 this card we're going to have as a top opening card and our embellishments etc will all go on the front here so next I have two pink pieces of pink cardstock these are this is from my stash we do get a lovely soft pink cardstock in the uh, paper craft society box but i needed more because i was doing i'm doing a lot of mats and layers so i have two pieces here they measure six and three quarters by four and three quarters we're going to have one on the outside here and there will be one on the inside here now my card is light enough that we could actually write on that but I do have a white piece <laughs> that I'm going to mat on over it and this piece measures six and a half by four and a half and I will get to stamping a sentiment and embellishing the inside. I will however take a piece of the pattern paper I'm using and this is the pattern paper and I'm going to embellish it by adding a little strip on the inside this was an off cut piece that i'm adding in here so i've just dropped down again um, by a quarter of an inch so this piece is four and a quarter and it's i think three quarters of an inch wide for this piece here so that'll go inside we'll stamp our sentiment stamp some of the snowflakes around it like we did in our previous card so now on the outside we're going to have a piece that sits on the top and then opens up so it's like a gatefold piece but it's going to be cut into like triangles it looks like the top of an envelope you know where you open and close it so that's why I'm kind of saying an envelope gatefold or gatefold envelope or this is a style that has been done before but it's just my version so to do the pieces on top we need a piece that's 12 inches long but if you don't have a 12 inch long piece you can use two pieces so i have two pieces here and they measure nine and three quarters by four and a half and on both pieces we want to score them and we're scoring them at three and a quarter yes so i have that done with this piece so we'll do it for this one so we'll score it at three and a quarter and then we'll fold this this cardstock is a hammered cardstock um, it's hammered on one side and it is smooth on the other side so you can use the smooth side for stamping and then the hammered side it you know it's got a nice texture to it you can use that then for a card base so now you can see here on this piece I have cut the corners off so what you need to do on this piece is you need to measure up and I have measured up and I'm just going to check my notes at two and a quarter <laughs> yes. because half of four and a half is two and a quarter it's been a long day guys so please excuse me so if we measure up to two and three and a quarter we're going to put a little mark on there and it's actually easier for me to do it this way because I can see better so I have a little mark just here now what I want to do is I want to you can draw a line or using your trimmer 
we're going to cut from the top of the score line here up to our mark and then from the top of the score line here up to our mark and then you'll end up with this so once i have this done i'm then going to take this and i'm going to stamp on it and i have that done on this piece already i've taken some of the snowflakes from the stamp set and i have them here and i have used some of the snowflakes to stamp on this piece so when it's closed it'll just be plain but when it's open which is how i think the card will be displayed um you'll have an embellishment here and i'm going to tie that into the belly band that we'll do as well as our stamping on the inside of our card so i'll go ahead and i will cut off my corners and i will stamp on this and then next to go inside that I have some panels so I'll move these out of the way and we'll talk about these okay so first off I have this piece here now this pink piece measures six and a quarter by four and a quarter and I have a piece of patterned paper to go on this and this piece measures six by four. I have die cut out the word snow and we got this die in our um, die set. And I'm going to pop that there. And you can see here I have two lovely snowflakes. And I have this one is already put together. This one I have die cut out in white. I'm going to bring the dies over. So I have numbered my dies. This is die one, two, three, and four. And if I just show you on the back, I have actually scratched using a pokey tool, the number one and put bottom on it. So the bottom one would be this one. Now I have done this one in white, but on this snowflake, it's in a holographic cardstock. So I've actually done the opposite for this one as what I've done for that. So that's the bottom one, number one. Then number two, I've done in holographic, but in this one, it's white. And then for this one, I've used dye three and it's in white, but on this one, it's holographic. And then the holographic number four on this one, on this one, it's white. So I've just alternated between a holographic card and white card, holographic and white card, or vice versa. I love how soft this snowflake looks with the holographic. I just think with the white on top, it really does pop. And this one is going to sit on my belly band that will go on the outside. So this one, I need to glue all my layers together. And then that one will look like this. And I just think that is so pretty when it's all together like that. So I know Christmas themes aren't really pinks, but I think they're a very kitsch color and I love them. So this snowflake is going to sit on here once I have this glued and then I'm going to take the stamp that says is falling and I'm going to stamp is falling here so it'll have snow is falling. Lovely. So that'll be inside our gatefold envelope part. This then will go on the outside like I said. So this will be for on the belly band and for my belly band, I have a couple of pieces here. So my belly band is the length of my cardstock and I'm using um, cardstock from the UK and Ireland. So this is 11 and three quarters long and it's two inches in width, but you can use whatever length you have. When this is wrapped around my card, base it's only going to come in to about here and I'll show you that with this piece. 
so it's only going to come so far in and we'll have a gap so to bridge that gap for my belly band I have a couple of layers here so I have a white layer and then a holographic layer and the measurements for those are uh, five by three and then four and three quarters by two and three quarters so this star is going to sit on this one and then I've stamped the happy and Christmas I stamped them in a grey ink which is what I'm using throughout the card and I have just fussy cut around those so that'll sit like so and I've put some foam tape on the back of these so they'll be raised up but I'll glue this one straight down. My, um, oh no, I have some foam tape on the back of this as well. <laughs> but this one I'm going to glue straight down. So they're all the pieces and bits that we need. Now let's look at assembling everything. I have my pink mat and my pattern paper glued down onto one side. The other side I'm just sitting underneath. I want to find the centre of my snowflake and glue that down onto my pattern paper panel. So having those two together will make it easier for me to make sure it's lined up. Then I'm going to um, stick down my snow die cut and then I'm going to be able to stamp my sentiment is falling. The reason I haven't added the um, panel there that's cut off on the right is so that this will fit better into my stamping platform, which you can see here. So I have my stamp in there and I'm using a grey ink. This is the Versifying Claire Morning Mist. And I use this throughout, even though you see that it'll like look darker gray and we'll say the snowflakes that I stamped some look darker than the others I didn't use a separate ink I just did first and second generation stamping so I have my sentiments now for the um panel that is inside the card base and I was going to go with let it snow and I decided instead to go with Dreaming of a White Christmas. So the Dreaming of a White is all one stamp and then the Christmas is a separate stamp. So I like to stamp each stamp at a time um, just so that it helps me get it placed better and it, it doesn't end up wonky because I have a habit of stamping things wonky even in a stamping platform. So now here I go, I'm going to stamp the snowflakes and you can see here I'm I've stamped it half on the pattern paper there and half off. So I've just used a dark grey um, fine liner pen to kind of ink in that line where um, it didn't ink properly. And then I'll just stamp down using the stamps on stamping blocks. My misty there on the page, I actually have that laminated. That way when I do stink stamp down over onto it I can wipe it off so rather than having just a regular misty page inside my misty stamping platform I laminated that page so I suppose I'm just a little bit tight <laughs> I didn't want to have to keep tearing out the pages you know and throwing them away at least if it's laminated I get much longer out of it and then when it's time to throw that away I can just laminate another one so you saw me there, I was doing my first and second generation stamping on the envelope part of our gatefold and there was a little ink kind of um, went over onto the outside but I used my eraser just to rub that off. So I have the two sides there now glued together um, and just filing off there was a little bit of paper from um, the the blade on my trimmer needs I need a new one so I just used my um, nail file to file that off so I have it stuck down on the front and now I'm sticking down my panel on the inside where we've done our stamping and I'm really chuffed with that I think you know I I don't know I think it looks lovely this is one of my favorite cards for Christmas I know I'd be making a lot of these for friends and family so let's now assemble our belly band so I have my long strip to wrap around and I've got my two panels here and I'm going to 
glue the holographic panel to my white card. Now I could have done a, you know, a holographic card and then the white panel on top, but I think the holographic, it just, it gives so much color um, in the shine, whether it's under a light or just natural light. I, I think it's lovely. So I've done it that way, but you can do that as holographic card and then your white card on top. So I'm just organizing where I want my snowflake to be. And I think I want it in this orientation. And then I'm going to place my happy and Christmas. And I love these. I love they're propped up as well. It gives a little bit of dimension on the holographic card. Okay, so I've slowed everything back down so that you can see how I wrap my belly band around my card base. I'm making sure I have an even amount to the left and the right. And then I fold them over. Now, I haven't folded them tight. They're just, you know, nicely wrapped over. Then our panel will sit on top. So I'm just having an eye as to how far I want my glue to go on the right side and the left side. So I'll add a little bit of glue to those two tabs there on the left and as well on the right. Do not glue down to the <laughs> envelope part of our card. Once they're in place, then what I do is I slide it off and I finish adhering um, the panel. Now you can see I'm struggling here a little bit, but it wasn't that hard, folks. Honestly, I was just, I was faffing with it. Once you get it back on once, it does slide on easier, I find. So just burnish the edges there on the right and the left of the be belly band itself. Sometimes it can be curved around so it doesn't go on as easy. But if you burnish while it's in the card, the right hand side and left hand side of the belly band where it slides over the card base, it will then work so much easier. And I have a trick as well to help. If you see my videos before, you'll know what that trick is. But anyway, I'm taking some of the little plastic snowflakes that we got and I'm gluing them down to the front and I'm just putting three because it's a pleasing number to the eye. I've also got these little diamante or diamond gems from my stash and I'm adding one to the snowflake, a large one, and then a smaller one I'm adding to the three little plastic snowflakes or shaker snowflakes that we got in the kit. And I just think between the sparkle from the Demonte and the shine, the real colorful shine from the holographic card, the belly band alone pops. I love it. <laughs> so you can see there now my belly band is slipping up and down fine. Um, now here I have a little bit of wax. This is candle wax, it's clear candle wax. If you go along the right and the left side of your card base and then put your belly band on, it'll slide up and down, no problem. Fabulous use of wax with any kinetic card where there's movement, I just love it. It's a tip from Sam from um, Mixed Up Crafts, not for doing it on using on a belly band that was my idea but her idea was to use um the wax with kinetic cards and I love it I use it all the time and it makes movement so much easier anyway you can see here I'm again putting some drops of glue on our focal point panel and onto them then I'm adding the little shaker snowflakes and again, I'm going to add the smaller little diamantes or diamonds, gems that I have in my stash to those little snowflakes and a larger one then to our holographic snowflake, our focal point in the center. And I just love this. I think if when you're gluing the little shaker snowflakes down, adding a little gem on top, it just helps the snowflakes, I think, to stay in place. So, yeah, and it's a little bit of bling in our card. I mean, really, it's, you know, it's a simple enough card um, with what's going on on it. It's just, you know, all our mats and layers. But I love it. I hope you um, like this card too. Um, and this bigger size, the five by seven size. You can see here now how easy, look, my belly band slides on and off. And the more you move this up and down, up and down along the sides, having used the wax, 
the easier it'll be for the recipient. So have a little play with it um, once you're done. So now I'm going to leave you with some images of the card as well as a little video where you're looking straight on rather than down at the card. If you liked my video, please give it a thumbs up because it helps my video to be seen within YouTube. If you're a subscriber, thanks for subscribing. And if not, you might consider clicking on the bell icon down below and becoming a subscriber. So that's it. That is our envelope gatefold card using the Paper Craft Society box number 36 by the wonderful designer Sasha Reed. This is my card. I hope you like it and I hope you'll give it a try. And if you do make it, please tag me in social media. I'd love to see your version of this card, whether you case the card that I've made or if you make it similar using different papers, etc. I'd love to see your version. So that's it. I'm going to leave it there, folks. Um, until next time, take care, stay safe. And bye for now. Bye.